Mother Base. A place you can call home. A place you can feel safe. A place you can bully your staff. Thanks for that, boss. And a place you need to look after. So I'm just going to go through how I built my mother base and what I think is useful and not useful so you can turn your mother base into your very own Groznikrad. Okay, so from the start of the game, you pretty much just want to take anyone and everyone you can because you can't scan people right away so you don't know what they have until you unlock the scanner. And you're going to see a lot of guys that look like this. D's and E's all over the place. They're kind of useless, but you need somebody at this point, so you just take anyone. And then what I did is I kind of set myself a standard once I did get the scanner and I wouldn't take anyone with anything less than a C. So like this guy, for example, he's got a C in support, so I took him. He's useful to me. D's and E's are just going to fill my room up with mediocre people who aren't really going to do a lot for me. So I kept my eyes out for C's. If there was no C's in an entire outpost, then maybe I'd take a D. But for the most part, stick to a standard. Start with C. If you don't see many C's around, then maybe grab some D's until C's start showing up. And as the game progresses, higher quality people become more and more frequent. So B's will become really frequent and then you'll start seeing A's and then they'll become frequent. And you'll just keep building up until you have A pluses all over the place. I'm at the point now where I don't take anyone with anything less than an A plus. And if I do get volunteers that are less than an A plus, I usually put them in the combat unit. So that I don't fill my rooms up with people that aren't really going to do too much for me when I could get potentially an A plus or someone in there at a later date. The only real exception to this rule would be someone who has a specific skill that you need, like a cybernetics expert or something like that. If he's an E but he's a cybernetics expert, then obviously you're going to want to take him. So aim for a high standard, and this is going to make life a lot easier in the long run. Clouds approaching. Another thing to be aware of is troublemakers. These guys are a pain in the ball sack, so I advise dismissing them and getting rid of them. No matter how good they are, no matter how useful they are to you, just get rid of them, because they're just going to keep putting people in the sick bay and there's really no need for it so dismiss them send them packing unless they have a really rare unique skill then maybe hold on to them but i'd really advise trying to get rid of them all just go through your men every now and again make sure none have crept in and this is just going to save you a lot of trouble having people in the sick bay and having your levels go up and down all the time i'd also recommend going through everyone every now and again and just checking everyone's in the right place so for example this guy in base development he's got a d in base development i don't know why he's in there but he's got C in two other things, so he's going to be more used in one of those places. So I'm going to go ahead and put him in R and D. And now he's going to be more useful than being in base development with his D. See if I've got any more. Here we go. I've got a D. This guy's in Intel. He's got a D in Intel, yet he's got a B in R and D. So I don't know why the hell he's in there, but we're going to put him in the right place where he belongs in R and D. So this is just going to organize everything, keep everything nice and efficient, using everyone to their maximum potential which is only going to help raise your levels. Another thing I think that can be a useful idea is when somewhere fills up, if your R&D department fills up or something, and you've got a lot of people in the brig waiting to go in, I just get rid of the lowest four or five ranked people, so I can make some space in that area, and I can replace those people with someone better. So my rank may go down briefly while I'm waiting for those new people to go in, but if I've just got rid of all those Bs, they're going to be replaced by A pluses or As or A plus pluses. So it's worth it in the long run. And if you're unsure of what the brig is, it's basically just a waiting area for all the new soldiers that you get in. If you fault and a bunch of guys out, it takes time to convince them to join your cause. So they just have to wait in here and eventually will be assigned to their appropriate station. Then we have direct contracts. If you're unsure of what this is, it's basically just a safeguard for a specific man or woman so that they don't die. You can't send them on dispatch missions, you can't send them to your FOB, I don't think. So this just kind of keeps anyone safe that has a special skill or lots of high skills that you want to keep alive. Like Hideo. And last but not least, just to talk about base development, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer with this. There's no particular order I'd recommend to level things up in. It's whatever you find most useful. So if obviously a lot of people want R&D, want new weapons and items and such, so obviously we're all going to go for that pretty quick. But as far as the other ones goes, it really depends what matters to you. Would you rather have better intel when you're out and about? Would you rather your supply drops come down a bit quicker? So it's whatever you're really into. Read the descriptions thoroughly. Make sure you know which one you want. If anything, I'd say take base development early because it obtains you materials and just builds them up and you don't even have to do anything. So... The earlier you can take that, the better. 
Anyway, this has just been how I made my mother base. I'm not sure if it's the perfect best way ever to make a mother base, but it worked pretty damn well for me and I found it to be pretty effective. So I hope you've learned something useful and thank you for watching.